Yeah, I can see it. Um, you might want to try to stop presenting and start representing or something. Yeah, I can see it. I am recording now. <laughs> okay. Yep. Operator dot adder getter. Is it kind of like get adder? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Operator. I mean, uh, adder getter operator is in the standard library. Oh, I see. Wow, this is sweet. This is nice. Wow. That's nifty. Is there is there a risk is there um, is there a risk that that you yeah go for it Well, it does. Okay. I mean, I think, I think a list, yes. So if it's a list, just convert it always into a tuple, right? Is there any case where it will, it'll, it'll explode if it's a list rather than a tuple? Do you guys know? All right. Well, and and in TensorFlow, we should have the NumPy doc string, so we should be able to extract the typing information. We should be able to do, you know, make make NumPy config and then look at the field type or something. Um, so, so yeah. So to be safe, let's just convert to tuples then, if we see the lists for now. Okay, great. What can, 
Yeah, so what kind of doc strings do they have? I mean, we wrote that stuff ourselves, so <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, gonna be dubious, maybe. Let's see. Right, it looks like oh they're already annotated they have type annotations so we don't even need to parse their doc string that's perfect so we can just use the because they're using the typing module so that's great uh, hit source hit source sorry you're not looking at my screen sorry hit source yeah and then you can see Okay, well, this one, I guess, maybe is not, but scroll down a little bit. Um, keep scrolling until the end of this doc string. All right, now they are using it here, too. Yeah, they're using the typing annotations on a knit, you see? They have typing annotations, so we can just scrap that. We can, we can use... Uh, that's basically... That's ideal. <laughs> um, but usually people aren't doing that, so... Um, so, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so we can use the typing information then. Um, let's see. Yeah, cool. All right, I think that'll be good then. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think we can just we can just grab the typing information because that's what we're interested in here. Um, and that's uh, let's see. There's a. Um, I mean. If you need to do that, I would just check out the um, um, the NumPy doc string stuff. Uh, yeah, where is that? Um, I would do a grep for it. Or let's see. Let me get, get or make make NumPy configure something. Yeah, make config numpy. Yeah, there you go. Um, this is all. Uh, where is it? Expect. Yeah, inspect signature parameters. Uh, let's see. Is that it? Let's see. Yeah. Actually, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, exactly right. But what I'm saying is the parameter structure will have. Um, the parameters, so parameters is each, is the, there's a better place where we're doing this, but, um, parameters is each of the, you know, the, each argument in the function, right? And so the parameter, um, if you do parameters dot items, um, it ends up with, yeah, pr oh, there down, there we go, down there. Parameters.items, right? So it's the name and then the parameter object, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a class that you can see in the Python documentation. But if you do parameter.annotation, it gives you whatever the type is. Um, so, yeah, that's probably what you want to do here. So you can basically just take the lower half of this, right? Ensure all the required parameters are present in docstring. So basically, you, you want to work from this for loop here forget about the body of it, but really just, you know, the parameter, parameter name, and then the parameter, um, you know, the, uh, the typing information is there for you. Um, the one thing you're not going to have is that the help, um, but you know, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, if we're just using this for, you know, converting type stuff. Um, but uh, you also like, you don't really need to do this because this is like what we need to do if we're going to, you know, make something that's like an entry point out of this, right? We need to make a config structure. Um, you really just care about, you know, validating the types are what they are supposed to be, right? So when you're, yeah. Um, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Okay. Okay. Um, 
Anyway, so let's see. Can you see it? Or almost, I think. Sweet. All right. Um, all right. Just make sure. Okay, I'm presenting. All right. All right. So this, I just posted this diff here, and so I'm going to post it in here. Um, All right, so let's go back to here. All right, so da, da, da. so essentially, we're going to come in here and we're going to modify this right so that parse unknown is going to be awaited because parse unknown is going to need to do the config loader stuff. So, um, so where is that? I mean, this is basically it, but it's basically, then it becomes like changing stuff. Um, So, and making it so that it really does work. So data, first. Oh, arg. All right. So yeah, this becomes async. And then, I mean, the problem with this, okay, so this is not ideal. Um, okay, where is parse unknown used is, I guess, the question here, because we probably just need to clean things up, because, okay, so, we really shouldn't, I mean, we lose, <laughs> we lose all, um, we lose all, uh, um, how about, actually, okay, how about this? Um, config loader equals... Uh, none. All right, so if you don't pass a config loader, how about we change it so that if you don't pass a config loader... Okay, so, all right, sorry, let me explain. All okay. right. Um, if we instantiate a config loader within this function, we lose all hope of any sort of thing if somebody makes a config loader for some point in time that, you know, say, takes some information in a file and actually, like, um, uh, you know, Okay, so there's this thing called Vault. Um, it's HashiCorp Vault. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but um, it's basically like a secret storage thing. Um, and so say somebody made a config loader that said, okay, I see this um, file, and the file, let me read the contents of the file, and the contents of the file might, like, you know, have, or uh, what's a better idea? Okay, um, let's see. Uh, okay, so we have this thing called um, the, actually this could be interesting, we have this thing called the Trusted Platform Module, and it's this hardware security uh, chip, um, and so basically this thing does all your crypto for you, and uh, so that way, you know, it doesn't get done, you know, you, you put it on a different chip, you can't do side channels and stuff on it, uh, well, okay, you can't, but it's harder, um, and uh, so... Essentially, if somebody had, like, you can have these things that are like a, a context file, and the context file will refer to some object that might be encrypted within the TPM. So I have this file on disk. Um, someone has signed into the computer. Um, so the file on disk gets unlocked, and now I have this config loader that, you know, when when we start the config loader, it does an initial handshake with the TPM, right? And the TPM is very slow, so whenever you do that initial handshake, it, it takes a bunch of time. And so when we first do this async with config loader, um, and like we have one of these files that is is for the TPM. That's when it first loads. So basically, based on the extension, right, we load the appropriate config loader and we do the initial, you know, um, async with on that config loader, right, to to make an initial connection, right. 
and so it might it's really slow um and then and so if we if we were to do that if we were to do that uh, and then and then we you know then we actually call the load file method and it, it loads the the contents right and it may do this conversion where it goes and it talks to the tpm and it comes back and it gets you the actual contents of the file decrypted um through 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 that that chip right and that's all a very slow process um but the the point here is that initial handshake is also slow and so if we do this within this function we're going to lose uh, we're gonna we're gonna incur that every single time, right? We're gonna incur that startup slowness, slow, slowness every single time. So we should probably pass it as a parameter, um, so that you know we could do here. We would say um, async with config loaders. As um, right here, and then we'd say config loaders equals that right uh, and that way um, you know we could keep we could one could choose to keep this this config loaders object um, open over the lifetime of mini calls to parse unknown um, so that's probably the way that this should work um, and then in here we just do um, and let me just make sure so this config loaders API so yeah. if we go to his load file, does this also have a load file? Yeah, it does, okay. Uh, this config loader API is not ideal. <laughs> um yeah, it's kind of fucked. All right, so yeah, all right. This is not great, but the config loader's object is better than nothing. Um, so yeah, let's just do it. Th let's do it this way, because then we still maintain the life lifetime of that config loader's object. Um, so yeah, basically. We'll do something like this, right? And then, or wait, or you see where you see where I'm going here? So, the config dict, and then we should have a merge function or so. so config dict. So if we see an argument, right? So if arg starts with the, the dash l if arg dot starts with um, you know at um, then we do this config loading right um, yeah Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, exactly, right. Well, and that's what I'm saying is that we have to, we're going to have to, it's, it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass, right? Um, because we have changes to async, right? But you really, I mean, you're basically, I mean, this makes it a bit of less of a pain of ass because you really only have to, right, you can basically just say none here and then if you don't pass it because there's lots of places where we're using this um in tests and things um and so basically you're just going to have to go change those to be a weight but that should be much less of a problem than um than having to make them also uh take a config loader because they won't most of those don't need it right um and yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll have to do do it main in the main place, right? Um, but that should be pretty trivial. Um, and then this one, let's see, it's merge. It's basically, yeah, load the thing, right? And then we merge it into, I think, just parsed, right? Um, I'm not sure what. There should be a merge function, right? Um, 
I think I think it's pretty much this, right? I think this is pretty much what you're dealing with here. Um, now, uh, you might let's see, yeah, I guess yeah, that and that would let you do things where you combine different files, like you were saying, right? If you have if you have different uh, layer configs, maybe you have different models with different layer configs or something. Um, yeah, I think you would. Yeah, 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 I think you're right. Yeah, that's what I was just trying to figure out. It's like, because especially the ordering might get mixed up here, I think so. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I think it's, I mean, I think it's pretty, it's where I think, I think this gives us a pretty strong foundation for this. I don't know. What do you guys, what do you guys think? I think, I mean, it gives us that ability, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably don't want to just randomly throw YAML files with layers in them <laughs> together <laughs> and then hope it works. I mean, maybe, maybe you do, right? But who knows? Uh, let's see. All right. Okay. So, and then I've updated this guy. So this is now. This is sort of closer to I think what you're going to need here. Um, sweet. Okay. So. All right, so just, do you guys want to take a break um, now before we continue, or do you guys want to keep going? Does anybody, anybody, who votes for continue? Okay. All right, that's fine, yeah. All right, well, I'm glad we started with you then. <laughs> All right, so let's see, layer support example. Um, let me just put this. Well, happy birthday to your brother then. Um, so let's see, Python and OpenCV example updated. Okay, we were going to review that. Uh, that one, let's, let me say, let's just review that one offline because that, that can take a while. And then custom models is essentially layer support. All right, so we're pretty much good then for your stuff, right? Open CV. All right, that sounds good. Of course. Have a good one. Thanks, Sexham. Bye. All right. So, all right, well, I'm glad we picked Sexham to go first um so and then, i mean that still was not short so <laughs> all right um all right okay so again what's the issue that we're facing with the distributed orchestrator at the moment here oh with the multiple all right yay <laughs> i was kind of thinking that would happen right that's that's the beauty of uh of distributed stuff right it always just explodes <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sorry. Can you say that again? Mm hmm. And this is on the workers, right? Mm. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry, can you say that again? Can you say that one more time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so will it start sending them to node B once it sees that node B has those operations, or will it not use node B? All right. Um, um, let's see. I mean, it should be start. I think. I think the answer here is really that if more nodes come online, it should start using them. Right, no matter right, no matter no matter when they come online, right? Because we have that circular queue, right? Um, so it should just be a matter of saying, you know, and right, and isn't that it's on the orchestrator side, anyways, right? So yeah, shouldn't I mean I I guess I'm not I guess I just don't see why that didn't just work, right? Because. Oh, it stops listening. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, just keep it open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, I guess, yeah, that's that's sort of your answer there is just do create task on it. And then when the orchestrator closes down, keep a hold of that task object. Do async IO create task. And then keep a hold of that task object somewhere so that when you do an A exit on the orchestrator, then you cancel the task. Oh, okay, great. Oh, okay, okay, sweet. So yeah, then then yeah, you should be good then. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, and and the fact that you have the circular queue on the orchestrator, I think, kind of kind of fixes that problem, anyways. So, um, sweet. Just put them in the queue. I think, right? I think. I mean, that's. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you just throw them in the queue, and it should keep using. The, it just should start using them, right? Um, so yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, okay, for the input network. Um, Yeah, I mean, the, well, you're gonna get inputs from the the workers when they. Let me let me take a look at the code real quick here. Um, okay, so also, what happened to the pull request? The pull request is all sorts of funky. Um, did you merge master or something? Ah, okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um. I think I think what happened here is that yeah yeah I know I need to fix the um, I need to fix the CI oh 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 where should you add that okay let's see um, uh, oh, great um, let's see where did we put did I put that in somewhere I want to see if I put that in somewhere Yeah, he got it right. Um, he's he's right. Um, but 
I thought I put that in somewhere. Um, I'm just trying. I'm just wanting to check if this is in the documentation or not. So I swear I put it in here, but I'm kind of feeling like I didn't. Um, um, God, I need to. We need to still rework this. Um, uh, to fix what? Oh, that, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, I would back out that last merge of Master, I don't know, um, uh, yeah, I don't know, I mean, I don't really know what to tell you here, unfortunately, I think what I would say is, the problem is, okay, the problem is you're targeting the Nats branch here, right, so, but we also haven't done anything on the Nats branch, so I think if we do, oh, why don't we do this, I think if we do, master then it should show only the diff that we want because we haven't merged anything into the minat stance yeah there we go i think yeah i think yash actually showed this to me once okay so now we can take this and you can do okay yeah okay so take this and do okay the problem is it still has those merge master all right so i think what we can do is Patch array. Okay, where are those ones where we merge? Um, I think this might be all you need here. Let's see. Yeah, try just this dot patch thing. Uh, okay, um, but I don't know. It might give you. It might end up giving you these. Well, it said one out of twelve. So yeah, I think it might have gotten rid of. Yeah. So I think it throws away those merge masters anyway. So here's what we should do: is I'll take. You probably want stuff from master. So why don't I just take master and 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 do. Uh, uh, reset hard head. Check out master. Get push u origin. Uh, nets. Um, all right. So now, okay. Actually, wait a minute. Actually, this might just work fine. We could just do this now. I think. Nets. Okay. No, it doesn't like that. Um, I would take. Okay, so let's change it back, and let's do. All right. Yeah, okay, let's see. Where is Nats? Let's check out the Nats branch and make sure that it's up to date. And then we'll just... I think what you want to do is you just want to pull down that patch and then and then wipe out your thing and then make that branch just that... Okay, wait, no, 29 days ago. So it didn't actually take the update. So it, it might work if we just do this, actually. Um, Uh, it sets the upstream so you don't have to say origin every time. All right, actually, this should work. I just, I guess it didn't push it. So this should probably, because now it should have all those changes and just be like, that's nothing. Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay, now that fixed it. All right, all right so we just needed to update Nats then. Um, okay, sweet. Um, okay, what were we talking about? Okay, yeah, so just continue to listen for new nodes while running to add to circular queue. All right, 
Sweet. Was there anything else on this one? Okay. Oh. Um, okay. So, I mean, right now, does it, it does. Okay. So right now, let's see. Oh yeah. That's why we opened it was because we were checking it out. Where did you get declared a graph execution? Where did this come from? All right, that's that's just funny because that's just I don't know where this came from, but this was I wrote uh, this was this was the initial name that I had for this whole thing. Um, so it must have shown up. It must have been somewhere, unless you came up with this. But my guess is this this was somewhere that I had put it long, long, long ago. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, so because um, yeah, okay, so right now we have. Let's look at the test. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, set instance details. Context. Then we do a knit node and in a knit node. Where's the net node? Uh, oh, not in context. Oh, init context. Okay. Uh, orchestrator node announces that it has all. This is in orchestrator node context. This has started all work in no context that are not already connected since so list of operations supported by them. No response with allocated token per operation. So it publishes that's it's announcing that it started is publish connect to orchestrator node. All right, and then required operations. Yeah, sounds good. And then This doesn't really make sense, and it's also not above what I'm assuming it's about, which is down here, right? All okay. No node response with delegated token per operation. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and then that's what we're doing here is we're subscribing to register worker node is a I would assume a constant up here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and yeah, that's when you're gonna get the new ones, and you're gonna okay, yeah. So I would say, I would say that that would that would be a good place for comment, right? Is to say, you know, yeah. So we could say something, you know, like, all right, you know, wait when when orker when when something like, um, uh, when. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, workers will register themselves with the this orchestrator 
by publishing to the following channel or something like that, right? Um, waiting for all connection to be found. So all available ops that wait. Okay. And then all available ops is, okay, yeah, an event and register worker. Let's see. Yeah, and then. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Unsubscribe. Okay, so basically we're going to remove this, right? All right, so. It shouldn't break anything, right? Let's hope. Um, let's see. Oh, no, goes through operation and state of flow. And assign an instance to a worker node, making sure that each worker node gets at least one instance. Okay, great. Um, yeah, right. And yeah yeah right it should happen i mean it it will happen let's see this is node token managing instance so the goal here is to create a structure that says okay this operation instance ends up with these nodes right these node ids right okay um and i and i think that that yeah so you have you basically have this dictionary of all the instances and then you have each instance i mean you can probably build this thing you know initially right and then each instance is just mapped each instance name is mapped to a list right and the list contains the tokens of the note workers right is that correct okay. okay yeah so you probably can make this thing yeah well you are making this thing initially right but you probably want to make it before before you do Ah, uh, yeah. Well, so... So, I mean, you should... I think I think you'd want to put it... I mean, you can put it before the wait here, right? Because once you hit wait, then all operations are available, right? And there... And you should have at least one ID in this list, basically, right? So... So move this before the wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and then so okay. There's one more thing that I think that we should do here um, is essentially to really test that this is working. Um, we should take um, we right. Okay, so right now this is all you know. Theor theoretically, yeah, we're all we're all good here, right? Um, but the the sort of a true test here would be to say. Um, uh, to start up a new process for each one of these, and uh, so you'd start it, you'd start up a new process for each worker, right? And then you would do something that would result in them all being like in them all being issued an operation at the same time, right? And then you would lock until they all you know they all do that right so you would use like the threading module or not the, really the threading module but you'd probably use like um multi-processing or multi-processing um so 
so essentially do some do some okay so start use use the multiprocessing module to actually start the workers within their own process right so they're now basically you know the the fork system call right would create a new creates a new process right like a yeah so make sure that it's in its own process and now that it's in its own process you spin up all i mean then this might be a test it might be a test you want to do now as soon as you can ex execute operations you probably want to run this test right so put them put them in their own processes right maybe make at least three of them right and then dispatch you know run a data flow that results in i mean and it can be as simple as right like there's three operations and uh, or there's what Yeah, that I mean, that's 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 yeah, that that would I mean, that's something that would be good to do that one too. Um, but so what I'm saying here though is really that that we're this is a test to make sure that everything is actually running in parallel, right? So basically, and and it's as simple as you have an operation that has um, you have an operation that has uh, let's see how do we do this. Uh, what do they need? They need like a semaphore or something. Um, what, are, what should we use here? Um, synchronization between trusses, sharing. Um, the, okay, the point is basically, okay, so take, take, you have three operations, right? It's like the lock demo, right? Or, well, no, or you have three, you have three operations, right? The goal here is to have three operations run, right? You you basically put three operations. They all take you know a string as an input, right? You put one input into the network, or you put let's see, yeah, you put three you put three inputs input into the network, right? So they each run, right? And they each you you want to check that they're all running at the same time, right? So that they all got executed on on three different nodes at the same time right so then basically they get their thing and they then they wait until they see that the other two have also gotten executed right and then they stop executing once they know that all three of them are executing have executed at the same time right so basically you end up with a situation where if they don't execute all at the same time this test is never going to complete right and so then that that way that way you know that it, it, it ensures that you have a test that makes sure that everything is running at the same time right because your test is going to be never completing unless they all run in the same time right so it just it tests that the scheduling is is working right and and actually scheduling things in parallel um and Uh, they can, yeah, I mean, yeah, as an OS level thing, like, yes, they can open files at the same time. Um, what, how, yeah, how that's going to work is, is, is going to be different though. Like that's may not be, it may not actually, you know, do what you, you, you think it's going to do. Um, so I think, I think what you might want to do is, um, actually Q might be a good way to do this. Um, so you could use i think you could use let's see so you're going to want to have like um you're going to want to maybe okay um let's see how do you do this uh you push three items each process pops one they wait for it to be empty yeah yeah that does work yeah that should work um let's see um joint thread um Yeah, you get three. 
and then you basically do like a while true on empty. Um, like, you know, you do a while, while not empty spin, right? So you do a q.get and then you do a while not empty, you spin, right? And then the operation completes. So now the thing is you have to make it, you ha you're going to have to do, you're probably going to have to do this thing where you like, you create an operation. So you're probably going to have to do something where you create, because you're going to have to pass this q to the various processes that are running before they're created, right? So they're all in the parent processes space, right? Because so, or else they're each going to get their own copy of the queue, and it's never going to work, right? So there's going to be some things to think about here, but it'll be it'll be definitely interesting, and you're going to learn. <laughs> so yeah, right. Like uh, everything, everything is uh, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 yeah. It's 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 fun stuff. It's not uh It's banging your head against the wall stuff, but it's fun stuff. Um, so yeah, okay. I think that's your your path there. Um, do you feel good about the rest of what what you should be doing here? The input network. All right. Yeah. So I mean, I think input network wise, like, let's see. I mean, what what do you have here is. Um, uh, all right. I would so I would stay away from I would stay away from I would stay away from doing the the final demo for like you know a full a full thing for a while here right make sure you can yeah <laughs> okay yeah 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 sounds yeah okay so and then other things here would be like um yeah. Okay. So yeah, focus on focus on get it. Make sure that they're all all going. And then you're trying to now you're thinking when you're talking about input node, you're like, okay, how am I going to pass these, you know, the outputs of these things together, right, or to each other, right? So the that's okay. So it starts up and it says. Um, you know, these these are the various operations that I have, and now basically you're going to publish, right? Your 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 plan was to publish to a instance within a worker node. You're going to publish to the queue of that instance within the worker node, right? To give it stuff. All right. Okay. So in that case, what you're probably wanting to do is you probably want to have um, this. Let's see. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is, well, this is what we're saying is this is why this is a proof of concept, right? Um, this is not, I mean, this, the, the goal with this is to get something where we're doing, we're doing something where you could run it on multiple machines. It's not truly it's distributed as in it's running on multiple machines. It's not distributed as in, you know, there's no central, central, uh, centralized con control, right? Um, so a bit, a bit of a bit of a bit of an overloaded term there. Um, but but yes, that I mean that would so that's that would be a different problem space, um, and and I think it's one that we want to want to do eventually. But yeah. Yeah, but it's not something that we're going to try to tackle right now. Um, so, so I think um, what was I going to say? Oh, okay, so basically, the input network um, when you run an operation, right? Um, you end up with let's see, you're going to want to have um, where is it? You need to do you need the let's see so yeah you haven't even gotten to the point where you instantiate like an orchestrator or something right so because you're going to need to instantiate a you're instantiating nodes but you're not instantiating um like an orchestrator node but you're not instantiating like a df of ml orchestrator right so you need to you need to create the orchestrator Right, and and the orchestrator, when okay, so the orchestrator essentially, 
your orchestrator is your orchestrator, your, your primary node, right? Um, so then you would do... Yeah, exactly. Your input network context, yeah, your input network context is a NATS input network context, right? And when you see a new input, you decide, um, well, let's see, I think it's actually more of the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the input network context is you have the orchestrator side and then you have the worker side, right? And the orchestrator, the orchestrator side is subscribed to whatever queue that the workers are publishing to, right? And they can all publish to the same queue, I think, right? Because they're just getting, yeah, right? It's just, you know, what's the definition, what's whatever, right? And, well, actually, let's see. It should have, well, it's going to have the parents too, right? And so this is where you get into, right? So this is where you're going to get into these, um, you're going to get into the fact that the input has a parent, right? And when it goes through the main orchestrator loop, it's going to say, okay, well, where are the parents for this 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 object, right? Where did this thing come from, right? Because that's going to... Ditch the parent. So the input has a parent, right? Which is the input that generated it, right? And so you, you're going to need... You need some sort of tracking system here, right? You need something that's, that allows you to say... Um, you, you need something that's going to say, um, um, let's see, because these, so these, the inputs all have unique IDs, right? That, that was part of, part of the thing that we did was we made the inputs all have unique IDs, right? And so you may not have, like, you're going to want to, you're going to want to have something that sits like some, it could even just be a giant dictionary, right? But it basically says you're going to start seeing inputs with IDs, and when they come in from another node, right? When you're getting an input from another node, we're going to have some kind of serialized rep representation of it, right? Which is basically um, uh, then DF, well, DF types input. And I think we still need to import. We probably need to. All right, yeah, so this probably still needs an export method or something. Um, no, yeah, okay, so value definition. Okay, so it's going to need, you're going to need to say parents equals, you know, uh, uh, okay, so, okay, this is the other problem. Okay, this, this is going to be a thing you run into. All right, so get parents actually gets every single parent ever right um so and that's that's um uh, that's questionable <laughs> um there is a issue that that is out there that says are we sure we want to do this um because if you don't have all the parents in memory then what does that mean it means you have to go like find out where the hell are they um but because you have parents and then you have the parents of your parents right um, so every, yeah, so, uh, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Okay. Um, okay, so you have the parents and then you have the parents of your parents. Um, and so the problem is right now we've got self dot parents. Um, we probably want like, let's see. So, Okay, or well, origin is like seed, right? And parents is the inputs that generated this input, right? So if there was if there was one op, so if there's you know there's the there's uh the, yeah the origin so the origin is where did this input come from, right? So that's the thing we might make like client or something, right? So if we had and, and that that's what lets us say, okay, these inputs are, you know, they might let us say that these inputs are trusted and these inputs are untrusted, right? Um, so would, by default, they're sort of, we make them seed because, you know, usually we're providing them, right? Um, but essentially with, with parents, right, and we now are in the situation where, okay, so parents is supposed to be the list of immediate parents, right, as input objects, right? Well... In the case when we export, we probably want to do, you know, uh, um, uh, um, 
we probably want to say, okay, our parents are just, you know, the IDs of our parents, right? When we're exporting. Um, because then one should be able to say, okay, I have, okay, so this, the situation that you're in here is, right, you, you have, the orchestrator is going to have something where it knows all of the, right, it needs to know all of these, these, these inputs, right? And it needs to know them because it needs to do gather inputs and stuff, and gather inputs is going to look through um, all of the, you know, it's going to need to do conversions on these definitions, um, and it's going to need it for the redundancy checker, um, because the redundancy checker does redundancy checking on specific paths of inputs, right? So it's, you know, one, one input created by a certain set of other inputs is different, right? Um, than another input created via another path, right? Um, so when you export, you're probably, you're going to want to make this change here where you're exporting the UIDs and you're going to want to make it so that the, this, you know, whatever this NATS, uh, you know, NATS orchestrator, we may, we may, and now this is, yeah, the, whatever the NATS orchestrator um, input network is, so the input network on the side of the orchestrator rather than the side of the worker, whatever that one is, we need, we're probably going to, we need that to have some kind of like, you know, giant dictionary in it that maps UIDs to inputs um, so that when you get an import, because you're going to get these inputs coming in over the network, right? So you're going to get these inputs coming in through this this your, this queue, your, the, the channel you're subscribed to, right? And when you get an input, you're going to get the value, the definition, and you probably need the UID. Um, I believe it's UID, right? Or no, what was it? Yeah, UID. Um, yeah, you're going to need the UID. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to have this giant dictionary that maps, you know, UIDs to the input objects, right? And then, and you know, this this giant thing, it could be like a, you you know, this could in this this could be swapped out for a database somewhere or something, right? But for now, we'll just use a dictionary, right? So, but the point is basically when you get a new input object, right, and it's been serialized over the network, all you have is the UIDs of its parents, right? So when you need to rebuild that on the side of the orchestrator, that's actually going to be, you know, doing the thing where it needs the parents for, you know, the, the locking and the, and the redundancy, then you have to do, when you see parents here, you need to go reverse look up, right? And you need to rebuild that, that object. Um, that's the point here. Um, so basically that's, I mean, that's going to be your main thing with that input network there, right? And then you're going to need to do, um, I think, I think that's your main, main thing, right? Because once you can rebuild the inputs on either side, right? Um, uh, for the for the worker side, it's basically just when you hit add, it publishes to this central queue or the central channel, right? On the on the orchestrator side, it's retrieve things from the channel when they're published, um, and uh, and um, uh, yeah, rebuild them, right? All right, so we probably have to move on now because. I'm realizing that we're getting close to 11 and we need to talk about Himachu's stuff. Um, so, um, all right. Um, so Himachu, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we should, we, uh, we've, it's been a, so what, okay, great. Well, we should see, okay, so we need to repro, we need to make sure that we're doing this at the beginning of meetings too and, and figuring out who's got short things and who's got uh, long things to go through. Um, so, Okay, so what are, what are we facing with the scikit operations? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, sorry, can you say this one more time?
All right, I'm also seeing that this is not what record context should be, so that might be an issue here. Uh, this one. All of them were merged. What do you mean by all of them were merged? That's because this, that's because of this function, I think. Yeah, okay, so what I, so I guess this, and this comes from, this comes from, sorry, a lack of explanation on data flow stuff and what the record context should be. Um, so let me point you to, um, I think this might be somewhat helpful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. So, because this, it looks like this is not in here. So we did not cover. Where is it? That that does not cover the inputs context. Yeah. This doesn't cover the context. Damn. Um. All right. So the thing is, the context is. <sighs> okay. Yeah. The input set context. So. And this is the one I remember. Again, you gave me feedback that this was not um, not clear on this one. So basically, the thing is, we need to create this object here. We need to create an instance of base input set context. Um, and essentially, let's see. And you can look at sort of string input set context, but it's going to look something like this here. Um, let's see. So your record con and it's going to be here. Um, well, okay, it's not going to be here at long run, but for now we can put it here. Um, I mean, for long in the long run, we should move it into df, um, the the df of ml slash df directory. Um, so okay, so string context handle. Okay, base input set context. Okay. Um, okay. So. Okay. Self. Ctx. String. Okay. All right. So. All right, so this is, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what we want here. All right, so essentially we have this base input set context. So um, these guys are, are from the uh, from dfml.df.base dot dot import base input set context, base context handle. And yeah, all right. So. So what we'll end up with here, actually, let me show you. All right. All right. Um, let me just put the comment on here. All right. So essentially, what you do is you create it's one of these objects right that's this base input set cop context object I'm sorry I should have explained this better um, but if you do this now and let's see record input record input set context and where's our other one is it string input set context yeah string input set context and where does this get used um, 
string input set context. Yeah, so MDF, DF memory is add. Oh, yeah, so string input set context. Okay. Yeah, so basically what we're doing here is, and this is, might be a good, no, that's not a good um, example of that, but essentially, all right, so essentially what happens here is when you did, when you did self record context, right, um, for some reason, um, we ended up with like a string that had all the same stuff in it. Um, and I'm wondering, I don't, I guess I don't know why that is, but for some reason all the feature data was the same, right? But the record keys should all be unique, right? So what we're doing, what we're going to do now is we're going to basically make this record context that holds the record and the record. So when we, we can get the record object back by saying, um, um, let's see. So, so the CTX, right? Um, let's see. And where's record? Record. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when you yield record here, okay. So this is something called. It says record does not exist. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna want. Now what you can do is basically, CTX. Oops. You can do CTX dot record. Because what we're going to do here is we create this um, we this this object here, right? Record input set context, and this is what you want here is um, record input set context. Sorry, I should have gotten back to you on this. Um, let's see. Um, Let's see. So, okay, yeah. So what you want is this record input set context, right? Because then you pass it as a record, right? When it wants to know what it is as a string, it's the record key, right? And when you, um, then when you finish, right, when you have the results that are associated with this context, you also have access to the record within the context object. Does that, that make sense, sort of? Right? It's, Right. Yeah, exactly. So this will work, right? It sh this should work, right? And the idea here is really, you know, the, the idea here is like, okay, the context is what, you know, what, what is this data in, in running as, right? Like what, what is this data associated with? Is that context, right? And it's a record, um, record inputs. Yeah, right. So the input set, right? is this is this list that you're giving it right it's this 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 list is the set of inputs that are that are supposed to be running under this rec like the context of this record um and uh and 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 so then yeah when it when they complete right whatever the results are they're associated with that record right that was that it, that that came from that input set um um it's not i guess the verbiage there is not like the wording of that is not perfect um, but I think this should fix your problem here. Does did it does it kind of make sense or? Okay, cool. All right, great. Um, I have to run now. Um, is there anything else, real quick, that anybody wants to talk about? Okay. Is this this stuff? Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, I'd like to go over this too. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we synced, synced up since we'd been so long. Um, all right, sweet. Well, thanks guys. Um, uh, issue with record input set context. Um, uh, John explained record input set context. Uh, C recording okay awesome hey thanks guys um sorry how much you will well next time we'll we'll figure out <laughs> whose is shorter first um all right have a good one bye